Hi, my name's Leela Higgins and I'm the manager of Citizen Science and Live Animals here at the Natural History Museum in Los Angeles. I think butterflies capture people's imagination in a different way than bees do. And so people have this kind of this this feeling that uh, that they're they're like, you know, a bee, they associate with something that's stinging, a butterfly, there's not really anything bad that a butterfly can do to you. But this year we knew that monarchs uh, were facing some serious trouble and we wanted to uh, make sure that we could uh, shed some light on that and also give something really uh, active and positive that people could do to help monarch butterflies. Butterflies really need not just nectar plants, which we all think about, yes, they need to sip that nectar to get the fuel that they need to like fly around, but the butterflies also need a host plant and that's a plant that their caterpillars can eat and uh, grow on. And so many of our butterflies, native butterflies here in Southern California, are very, very, very specific on the type of plants that they can eat when they're a caterpillar. And so therefore you have to plant only that plant. And a lot of times they are native to the region they're from. So it makes sense. Those butterflies and those plants evolve together and that's why they need each other. And so if we don't plant those native plants that the butterfly needs, we won't see those butterflies flying around when that's uh, basically only milkweed for monarch butterflies. And so as you can see, it's a very small space. It's not, it's not a lot of plants and you can put it into your existing garden. We wanted to put it in this space right here so we could uh, monitor it on a weekly basis and tell people how many eggs and caterpillars and pupa we're finding and um, show that you know, a very small space can actually support a pretty good sized monarch population. Now we still are filling in on a regular basis and we go to places like Theodore Payne and Tree of Life Nursery, but when we did that initial planting we had to go with some very large nurseries, but we, you know, we were trying to be really conscious of getting things that were sourced as locally as possible. And so when you plant those native plants, the native butterflies and the native pollinators that are here all show up as soon as you do that and, and we've totally seen that transformation happen. We have records and specimens that have been collected from Griffith Park. And so from, you know, a number of years ago, decades and decades ago, we have records of what butterflies were here in Griffith Park before the city became really huge and urban. And they found that there were four species missing of the, I think it was 50 or so that were originally found. And so is it because those four species are now uh, locally extinct in Griffith Park or is it just because we're not finding them? But is there something we can do? Is, uh, can we plant their host plants? Can we put those back into Griffith Park in, in a nice uh, um, garden or a nice uh, kind of like urban habitat restoration project? And so maybe they'll show back up again if, if they get the food that they need, if they get the resources they need. Maybe those butterflies will show up again. I think butterflies can be the way that we kind of like push the whole agenda forward about creating native wildlife habitats for the creatures that live in, in the city. And most people don't realize how much nature can live in a city.